Zoom command. They believe Mars to look like. Cosmic Ray, the quantum mechanic. I'm here to show you the real way the beta decays. A neutron is two down quarks and an up quark. When it decays, a down quark goes back to being an up, makes it a proton. The W minus is going to carry the electromagnetic charge through the electron. The compensating missing mass is accounted for in the anti neutrino also called an electron neutrino. Spin are conserved through the neutrino. Mass is conserved through the electron and the neutrino. And the electromagnetic charge is conserved in the electron. And the down goes from a minus one-third to the up's positive two-thirds. That's a net minus one electromagnetic charge that is carried away on the electron. A neutron will not exist by itself on average 20 seconds. Now what is the sun doing? It's making neutrons. So when a neutron is made, it's got on average 20, it might even be microseconds. 20 seconds on average in air and on earth anyway. So in the core of the sun, you need a proton to hit that neutron quick or it's going to decay back. The electron will get lost in the shuffle because there aren't really many positrons to annihilate to become a gamma ray. I guess there are actually in the core of the sun because when this reaction first happens from an up going to a down, you're creating a positron. So if that neutron decays, it's going to kick out an electron that's going to have positrons around it to annihilate to a gamma ray. So that's an interesting point I didn't think about. We're always thinking the neutron bonds with the proton becomes what's called deut a deuteron, or deuterium is the chemical name for that. But the deuteron, proton and neutron bound together, is now more stable. But the neutron by itself, I haven't thought so much that if the neutron doesn't bind right away, it's going to decay back to the proton. So the down becoming back to the up quark, the W minus is the weak force carrier, what they call it, electron antineutrino. So this shows a beta decay correctly by taking the quark theory into an account. Beta minus decay. You should see this wire that's hanging there. It wrapped three times around my foot. I don't know how statistically that could happen. So a carbon-14. Carbon-14 is created in the atmosphere. Carbon-12, if you remember from our chart of the nuclides and the stellar nucleogenesis, elemental nucleogenesis, elements newly made in stars, carbon-12, six protons, six neutrons, that's the baby. In the atmosphere, nitrogen and other things that go through different reactions with cosmic rays, particles from the sun, protons and electrons are con continuously hitting the sun. We're going into them at 66,000 miles an hour as we circle the sun, and the Earth is actually turning, but that doesn't affect the rate on the atmosphere. Carbon-14, once it is created, will do a beta decay. So what's a beta decay? A beta is an electron from a nuclear reaction by the beta decaying, a neutron became a proton, increase in what they call the chemical proton count. So now it becomes a different element, nitrogen-14. Now nitrogen with a proton-7 count has to have the seven neutrons. Seven and seven is the most abundant isotope of nitrogen, nitrogen-14. The symmetry comes into play again. Seven protons, seven neutrons, as you see. Carbon-14, though, with the six protons, eight neutrons, 
This thing isn't very happy. It's got too many neutrons. They're going to start falling off. What does it do? It decays. The neutron in the nucleus now. I was reading some about this halo. Maybe one of the uh, protons. There's a neutron halo for some of these uh, uh, nucleus. Some of the radioactive nuclei are going to have a halo where two neutrons are surrounding. Carbon-14, maybe one of them. So carbon-14 by beta decay becomes nitrogen-14 plus, what are we missing? Whenever the beta decay, I guess we took for granted that the beta was there, but the anti-neutrino, matter-antimatter, it's called pair production. If you, we'll talk about the Big Bang here. We'll actually get to it right now. This is a kind of a whole program here. I will be seated. Since we're here, we'll look at this one more time. The resolution is really lousy. At least when they represent the nucleus, it's not protons and neutrons anymore. It's the quarks. So if you see an up with two downs, you've got to know. And see, this is why mine are drawn bigger. Is it one of these with two ups and a down? Here we go. Two ups and a down is a proton. Two downs, <laughs> two downs and the up is a neutron. They've got this drawn the same size as the proton. Well, the neutron is more massive, so in my table, my drawings, Neutron bunny, neutron bunny is bigger than the sleepy proton. What else is this missing? This is shown green, maybe to represent the gluons around it. Well, look at they're red. The ups are positive, two thirds, the down minus one third. So my color coding again, downs negative are green. Ups positive is always red. Positives red on the battery, think positives red everywhere. I see different color schemes. Stick with it. It works best. I've done the research. Green for negative, red for positive, blue for neutral. So a neutron, blue. Proton, hydrogen, red. Down, negative, green. Oxygen, real electronegative, keep it green. Carbon show black. That way oil, and you'll think of those. Same size, same color. I had to look real close with my old eyes. Is that an up quark or a down quark? Two ups and a down. So what they're trying to show here, I'll bet, if you have two downs and an up, that's a neutron. So the only thing it could do is decay. So they're going to show the neutron in the next phase is going to get our W minus. We'll have to get Jonathan Winters. We'll take that from a Mad Mad Bro. It's a big W. I tell you, a big W. It's under a big W. Well, that's how the weak force, beta decay is through a weak nuclear force. Notice the proton, the, the quarks are still in there. They're still bound. So the strong nuclear color chromo, what do they call it, chromodynamic. The strong nuclear color force is still holding the quarks together. But the weak nuclear force is what's accounting for the beta decay, which via the W minus particle, it's actually a particle that's carrying this force, streamlines into the proton, two ups and a down. The electron, antineutrino, you see them down here? That's the byproduct. So now when it's out, now they're going like that. I really wonder if they go opposite directions or if they go together or if one goes up because all the drawings I've seen here have them kind of going at like a 45 degree angle. So at least these are showing quarks. I can't get too upset about that. Here's a little history of a neutrino because they were kind of wondering exactly what was going on. So here it was in 1934, 
Enrico Fermi was the first one 